I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fangs, claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just as sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. And we're back. I missed y'all. Yeah. We, yeah. It was, it was a ske- schedule is be schedule Oh, Things like, be thingy. What? So Mother's Day happened. It was, it was great. Mother's Day happened. Then I had a wedding that I had to go to. Then you had a wedding. Yeah. And then yesterday we were would would have been our regular day, but like I had shit going on in the morning, and by the time I got home, mm-hmm. you know, I, Erica was exhausted, and we had a family member yeah. that had a medical thing going on, so it was it was crazy. Not but idea. we're here, Not we're idea. here, we're here, we're back, and I want to share with you some of the joy of fatherhood that I got to experience yesterday morning. Hey, this so, is like, I, I can already tell that this is part of the reason why I don't want to experience the joy of fatherhood. So I was minding so my business go. on the couch in the living room, watching sumo as you do with day 14 of the grand tournament. And mm-hmm. uh, I was enjoying it. It was a good match. There's a strain, there's a foul smell in the air. So I go, uh, it's time to change the diaper because you know, she was sitting on my lap watching sumo with me as babies do. And then I go to carry her into the nursery. And this was at like four o'clock in the morning so it was still dark until i got into the nursery and later down and then i was like there's poop everywhere and i start like getting wipes because i start cleaning her off and, I, and i'm like what they're like there's so much poo poo everywhere and then i look down and it looks like i could have spilled a bowl of oatmeal on my lap so there was also just a bunch of poo poo all over my lap <laughs> and then well then erica comes in because i think she could tell i was starting to panic about the amount of poop and she and it was on me and oh, also when I like I usually put on a mask to change diapers with cologne on it because I just and I still dry heave so I've been there just like <laughs> like just dry heaving covered in poop mm-hmm. the baby's covered in poop Erica takes the baby I take off my pants and I go to throw them in the sink in the laundry room and just dry, dry heaving actually and, and I throw up on the way back in mm-hmm. and then so I'm trying to get cleaned up and then I look down and there's footprints my footprints I had stepped in poop that was also on the living room floor, and now I had poop on my foot, and then there was poop all, footprints on the floor. It was so Brandon, much. Brandon, I just need to tell you, if that had happened to me, there would never be another episode of the podcast because <laughs> I would have killed. I would have died. I would have been dead. I would have been dead. That would be the end of me. That's like literally it. I, I don't recover from that. That's the end of John. Yeah. It, it was- if that were to happen... <laughs> If then, that were to happen, uh, I would stop existing. And then, so, like, I start throwing up, and then, because I'm throwing up, that's making Erica dry heave over the baby, so I'm like, Bleh, and then she's like, Bleh, uh, uh, it's just a chain reaction of bad. Yeah, no, that that would kill me. <laughs> that would be it. There would never Woo. be another episode of this this po- this podcast ever, because I'd be dead. Yeah, so then I got, I got I got that going for me. <laughs> mm-hmm. That that would be the end of my existence. I don't know how you're still alive, to be totally honest. Uh, mostly coffee. Uh, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> just, just coffee. God, I just I can't even like. I can't. And I I, I, can't. I had other things to talk about, but they my brain's gone. They've since since just disappeared. I oh. thought I was gonna like. I literally thought I. I think I had something like on the tip of my head, brain bits, whatever. Yeah. But like, you've now completely derailed me. This is it. Yeah. Oh, I saw a, lo- a Lotus, like the car, the also <laughs> the way home from work the other day. And like, Lotus is like a sports car, but not in the way like a Dodge, like Hellcat's a, a, a sports car. Like it's a real yeah. sports car. Like um. Yeah. Like your your butt's almost on the ground. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, you're clearly, clearly not from around here. Yeah. <laughs> because. Oh yeah, no. If that if car, you drive- any pick any any street, that car will have just so much damage done to it. Mm-hmm. The roads are all fucked up. Where the fuck are you driving a Lotus and up like? The, it was in Woods. It was on State New York. It was three seven. It was heading towards Woodstock on three seventy five. What are they? Thinking? I don't. I don't know. Like literally, what are they thinking? 
Now, if like knowing where they came from, they're safe. If they take the same road back, their car will be destroyed. <laughs> but like, what are they thinking? I don't know. Like, just don't. It's a bad place to have. Like, uh, they literally don't. They they gave up on fixing the road. Like, there's literally just signs that tell you the road is fucked now. They don't fix the roads. They put up signs to tell you that the road is fucked. Like that's that's not incorrect. No, it's not. Because I forgot, like, I know it, where I usually go with the spots, but then I had to go to um, uh, one of the hospitals uh, the other week, and I was taking one of the main highways, and, and I saw a sign that just said rough road ahead, and I thought that's, like, the normal when they redo the pa- uh, uh, pavement mm-hmm. kind of deal, where, like, it's still drivable. But then I saw, I was like, why are all the cars in front of me swerving to a different lane? And then I did it, and I was like, holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like we're just rap rat. It's like it's it's like they're trying to prevent someone from invading uh uh like Rhinebeck. <laughs> the fucking how bad that road was. I mean Rhinebeck ram being Rhinebeck is enough reason to not invade Rhinebeck. Yeah. But it's where the faster ER is and it's nicer. You gotta go to the fancy town hospitals. Yeah, Rhinebeck is a pretty bougie town. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of wealthy people there. On second thought, maybe invading Rhinebeck is the better idea. It's probably a pretty good idea. That's actually probably a pretty good idea. Yeah, Yeah. I don't have much to say because I've just been doing interviews. I had one interview where someone showed up and they only spoke Spanish, even though all of our comms were in English, so I was super confused. Oh, so like they they could like read and write English, but they were only like yeah. Uh, and it was an interview, like a yeah. a, a Skype a, a a Zoom interview. So like <clears throat> I was super confused and like I felt terrible because I was like I uh nobody nobody on my team speaks Spanish, neither do I, and I'm the only person who can do this interview. I am sorry. <laughs> I had to do a job interview, and I felt so bad for this person, and it was uh four hour interview and I kept like like towards the like the, the last part I give a tour and then I kept pointing out that there because I peed a couple few few a few times during the like and they just kept declining and I don't know what was happening I felt so bad because they also was, they just decided to interview on like the hottest most humid day ever so like they, they there's no food and they're not peeing Ugh. anyway <coughs> That fun intro. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, to- I, I was gonna, I was gonna offer something else to that, but like, I'm done. That, yeah, that, that's it. Yeah, I'm, I'm dead by association right now. All, so. all the poo poo, all the poo poo. The good is news not- is, is, is that well, the bad news is she's the baby sick again. The good news is this time poo poo's normal. Just normal, normal poo poo, not like. It's like a howitzer. Like, it sprays up her back. I don't know how that... Anyway. Welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, we will take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling tales of the monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John, and we're really bad at the this week thing. Each yeah. week thing. And, really uh... Bad. Yeah, we, we done... We, we done been messing up. But it was it, it, it scheduled thing, uh, um, preventable. Um, but this week we're gonna mix up the topics a little bit. So as voted on, uh, because we we had our our, uh, little, uh, our, our our schedules didn't quite work out. I did have a number of episodes written, and I posted into the Jackalopes channel on the Discord server to let them you know pick what we're gonna cover. So they they chose uh, places that aren't a place. So this week we're gonna talk about Crockerland. Um, I feel like this is a spoiler for Crockerland, though. The, uh, f- what's a spoiler? Oh, places that aren't a place. Well, it's yeah, you can, it's I, I've I've actually heard of Crockerland before. The, it's it's not a spoiler. It's what it, did I? I like recently read about it. Ha- why? <laughs> I don't know. I legitimately don't know. Like it was a recent thing I read about. Huh. I mean, I don't remember anything. I just remember, like, a fake yeah. landmass, and it involved the Arctic. Yeah, well, the, 
there we go. So Crockerland is unfortunately not a haunted theme park based on the fictional character food brand Betty Crocker, but it is indeed a landmass. Um, what, what about what about Crocker from uh, uh, Fairly Odd Parents? Uh, who is Crocker from Fairly Odd? Why am I drawing a blank he's, on who that is? He's the one who's like obsessed with the fairies. Oh. Butch Hartman's a complete asshole, though. But that's a whole nother thing. That's like a that's like a whole nother podcast talking about how bad of a person a lot of the people who made cartoons that we enjoy are. <laughs> um, don't, also, don't ever learn about content creators. They're all bad. John Landis is a murderer, and that's all I'm gonna say. John. Oh, so is uh, who's the guy that played um, Inspector Gadget? He is too. Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch? No. Uh, Mark Wahlberg is absolutely a murderer. He killed a man. For real? Yeah, I'm like 90% sure. It's Matthew Broderick. That's who I meant. Matthew Broderick killed two people. I think that was an a uh, that was a, a car accident, though, right? <laughs> he got drunk and drove into two people in Ireland. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That was... That's right. <laughs> um, I think I think Mark Wahlberg's murder was a little bit more. Um... more okay, pre he... premeditated. Uh, I don't know if he killed the person, but he definitely had hate crimes and attempted murder for sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, Mark Wahlberg's a bad person, and John Landis. Uh, John Landis killed two children who he was had been working with illegally in an actor. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh. Oh yeah. He starts with attempted murder and <laughs> after saying some he made wild some shit. Bad. He said some bad things. Mark yeah. Wahlberg is not a good person. No. Most racist hamburger ever. The oh. Funky Bunch is not funky. The Funky Bunch is racist as shit. <laughs> it's Marky Mark and the Funky Punch. As long as you're white. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much <sighs> pretty much and which is know, honestly the that, actually, that's honestly they, they, they so i know we will our garbage tv so have you seen the latest uh season of the circle brandon brandon my my girlfriend calls stuff like the circle trasher yeah <laughs> so yes i have seen the latest season of the circle i thought it was so funny that like the the week or two after we you the, the whole spice girls episode <laughs> they actually have the spice yeah. girls on the circle yeah that was great it was so good i was like such kismet i thought for a second that you were going to talk about have you watched the most recent block of episodes i'm all caught up yeah okay so this is a spoiler for the block of episodes that were released on the 19th of may for season four of the circle yeah um did you see... You, you saw the portrait section, right? Yes. Do you remember? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the one dude drew a portrait of uh, Yu Ling that was like... I don't think it was on purpose racist, but it oh, definitely I would have to go looked, back. I just remember what they did for Frank. The snake? Yeah. I'll have to yeah, go back it, and watch that. It probably... I don't think it was... It probably wasn't on purpose... No, it was. I don't think it was on purpose, but it was. Uh, it was bad. Yeah. Um. Uh, but what what was I gonna say? Um. Yeah, but no, the the Spice Girls were actually pretty fucking great. Yeah, they were pretty funny. They had a dog. I like dogs. Dogs are fun. I also don't yeah. know why they didn't automatically. I mean, it's good they didn't automatically sniff them out, but like. Frank should have known immediately that they were a, a, a catfish, right? Having like Bra having been aware of past seasons of the Circle, and then Brandon. being given a ch ch the ability to choose, of course they're going to be catfish profiles. Like you think they just have two people sitting like somewhere in a room, and there's only a fifty fifty shot they'll actually be on the show? No, of course. No. It, oh yeah, it's it was completely fucking obvious. But like you know. I hope check. Frank wins. I like Frank. I'm pulling for Yuling. Yuling's fun too. Uh, if Frank, they're my top genuinely, two. Genuinely, genuinely, if Frank or Yuling win, I, I'm happy. 
either of them I'm fully happy about. Yeah. The only person who I like the one person who I'd be really pissed if he won is Nathan. Oh yeah. He is a he is a nice guy TM personified. Yeah. And he's a piece of shit. But he's but he's playing the game. Like he's fully no, gamified. No, it. Brandon, Brandon, Brandon. There's a difference between playing the game and being an actual human piece of detritus. 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 Like you don't like he doesn't need to be that mean playing the game. Is yeah. what I'm saying. You don't have to be that like nasty of a fucking human being. I would still write Brew as worse than Nate on Brew's account of the Brew of he because he keeps putting his name in things. Yeah, but Brew's Brew's like not doesn't give me nice guy vibes. Nate gives me nice guy vibes. Yeah. <laughs> Also, Mama Carol was the fucking worst thing ever, and I have no idea how anyone believed that that was an actual human. They fucked up so many times. I I legitimately like literally every time Carol had an interaction with someone, they she made a statement like, um, like when I was your age or someone young like you, or like that's not how people like they might nope. drop that once nope. or in a conversation, but not nope. every fucking time. No, nope. like come yeah, on, it would have been I I would have been like, oh, this is like. A fake person. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, in June 1906, Commander Robert Peary, a veteran polar explorer, reported uh, sighting land across the Arctic Ocean about 130 miles northwest of Cape Thomas Hubbard in uh, the high Arctic. Peary mm -hmm. was on a state-of-the-art ice-breaking vessel, uh, the Roosevelt, named in honor of one of the principal bankers of the expedition, President Theodore Roosevelt. Who's uh, that? <clears throat> Who is that? I've uh, never heard of that president. Are you lying to me? He uh, s s walk with a stick and uh, whisper. Um, he reinforced some pretty bad racial stuff too. <laughs> so, 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 some would say all presidents. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, P Peary names the new territory Crockerland in honor of George Crocker, one of his financial backers. As a note, Peary did not visit or land on Crockerland in any way. Um, so... Okay. He just sees it and then names it. But, like, okay. Okay. So... He's like, that place is now named after this guy. And then continues like, on. Like, alright. So here's my problem with this. Right? What if it's connected to another landmass and you don't see that and you didn't like investigate that? Like, right? Like, I I know that this is going to be bullshit. Yeah. Like, I'm not even suspending my disbelief. I know this is going to be bullshit. But, like, if we're being real, like, why the fuck wouldn't you just go to it? Uh, also, this is, this is 1906. Yeah. The ability to, to reckon where you are based on latitude and longitude is at the state that it's, it, it's, it's not quite as good as it is today, but you can pretty much get like real close. Yeah, yeah. Through reckoning, and then like if you incorporate dead reckoning through like you know your tra like your travel, the speed you're going, you can pretty much like pinpoint it directly. So like I don't know what the fuck this person yeah, whip is out thinking. the old uh, astrolabe, do some of yeah. that fun stuff. Yeah, he probably named it, and then he was probably I don't know. Go back with more ships and colonize it, and then who cares? <laughs> I mean, that's that's the imperial way. <laughs> that's the imperial way. What if that? What if it's already a discovered place and there's a name for it? Oh, colonize and call it what we want anyway. Um, sounds about white. Sounds about white to me. Uh, Peary names the new uh, uh, territory Crockerland in honor of his financial backer. Um, his expedition was uh, to set foot on the North Pole. His mission had failed 175 miles short due to lack of sufficient supplies. So, as a side note, I overpack. If you're going on an expedition, yeah. overpack. Well, I also want to say that that is not that close. <laughs> no. Really? Like, like, it may seem like it's close, but when you consider, like, navigating the, like, elements of the Arctic Circle... That is not close at all. No. Like, that is a massive fuck up. It is. Like, pack more. Like, it's what he needs to do. <clears throat> like, well, you're literally going you, to the Arctic. 
I bet you he's the kind of guy who only packs like two pairs of underwear and doesn't think, doesn't plan for the unfortunate no. things that will happen. I no, I sc- overpack. Scroll up. Look at those pants. That thick fur pants. There's no, no underwear back there. He's only wearing that one thing. He's shitting in that. <laughs> yeah. It's he is, just that is on. That is a shitty pair of pants. No, it's not even taped on. It is caked on. Yeah. Just uh He doesn't he, have a belt. It's just shit. He he just squishes when he walks everywhere. Oh yeah, he look that's a total squish walker. He's a squish walker. Okay. <laughs> it's it's, you know, it's, it's the new cryptid squish walkers. You wanna go to squish squish walker ranch? <laughs> No, the last time I went there, I got pink eye. Yeah, squish walkers are so easy to track. They're pretty easy. Yeah, you just, you just follow <laughs> you the You follow the tracks. It looks just like my living room yesterday morning. Pretty much. Were you uh, were you at Squishwalker Ranch? I was you at Squishwalker been. Ranch. Uh, plans were made for an uh, independent expedition to confirm the existence of Crocker Land. Uh, map its position, study its features... Uh, and having a long time connection with Perry's Arctic explorations, the museum, the American Museum of Natural History in New York City, considered the new project as one of its uh, responsibilities. Moreover, the museum expected to benefit from the zoological and ethnographic collections from uh, scientific observations, such as meteor- meteorological measurements. I definitely read the American Museum of Natural History's report on this expedition. Like, that's not even a joke. I have no idea why I why? read about this. I don't, Brandon, I literally don't know, but I just read about this one time. Like, in the past three months. That's crazy. Okay. Yeah, because I distinctly remember reading about this. So, he apparently tried to coax funds from one of his previous backers, uh, San Francisco financier George Cocker. Uh, sorry, Crocker, who had donated $50,000 to the 1905 to 1906 mission by naming the previously undiscovered landmass after him. In his 1907 book, uh, Nearest the Pole, Peary claims that during his 1906 mission, he'd spotted, uh, quote, faint white summits of Crocker land. Uh, Wait, his- so, like, is... So does he mean like he saw mountains on Crocker Land? Yeah, I think he, he's saying that he found the landmass because he was able to see the peak mountain peaks over the horizon. Um, mm-hmm. So what you're telling me, what you're telling me is it would be very fucking easy to find this land. Yeah, just go north, you know, apparently. <clears throat> His effort, yeah. however, did not work as Crocker was putting his money into rebuilding San Francisco after the after its 1906 earthquake. So, <laughs> good on you, Crocker. I, uh, I, I, that good way to spend your money. Let's let's Brandon. He is a a man in 1906, San Francisco. You said, yeah. yeah let's let's not say good on you with that oh, like sight he's unseen. probably like rebuilding it but redlining everything. Yeah, let's let's not. Yeah. Let's just like not as like a rule. Let's just just no. Okay. <laughs> I I don't I don't trust like that. Uh, but Peary did make another attempt at the North Pole after securing backing from the National Geographic Society, and on April sixth, nineteen oh nine, he stood on the roof of the planet, uh, at least by his own account, saying that quote the pole at last. Uh, the explorer wrote in his journal, "The prize of three centuries, my dream and ambition for twenty-three years, mine at least." Um, was he twenty-three at the time? No, th- no, he is older. I mean, look at him in that picture. I mean, what? Well, shit! But like, I mean, what? He looks what is, like he's in his fifties. So but, maybe but he'd only started that? exploring twenty years ago. But like, what? Is, like that? Like that doesn't mean anything to me. One second, I'm looking. I'm looking up his age. One sec. One sec. Uh, Robert Peary. Yes. Um. Also, technically, Brandon, every place on the world is the roof of the world, depending on how you think about it. Yes. <laughs> he was born 1856, so... And this is 1907. So let's see, 1907 so he was minus 50. 1856. He was, he was 51. 50. So yeah. he would have only been exploring... He would have started when he was 28. 
hmm. for it to be a 23 year uh, milestone. Uh, Peter wouldn't celebrate this achievement for a long time, though. When the explorer returned home, he discovered that Frederick Cook, who had served under Peary on his 1891 uh. North Greenland expedition, was claiming that he'd been the first to reach the, the pole a full year earlier. Uh, for, Got him! Got him! Uh, for a time, a debate over the two men's claims uh, raged, and Crockerland would become part of the fight. Cook claimed that on his way to the North Pole, he traveled to the area where the island was supposedly said to be, and had seen nothing there. Crocker Land, he said, did not exist. Okay, so so the conceit here is because he didn't see Crocker Land, if Crocker Land exists, he's lying. Yeah, it's like, I got if there Crocker first Land- and I didn't see it, and then he's going, no, I got there first. You're lying because you would have obviously seen this landmass if you yeah, actually then- went there. And then the opposite is, the opposite is, yeah, okay, all right, yeah, I, I get it, yeah. I get it. Yep. Uh, Peary's supporters began to counterattack, and one of his assistants on a 1909 trip, Donald McMillan, announced that he would lead an expedition to prove the existence of Crockerland, vindica- vindicating Peary and forever ruining the reputation of Cook. I just, I just want to say that, like, it's weird to me. It's weird to me when people like double down for somebody, you know, like like this, because it's kind of like, like, uh, what are you doubling down on something that they themselves have? They know nothing about. Yeah, like like it's it's like, nah, they're right. They they're not lying. And it's like, wait, what what evidence do you have of this? Like, why are you in this person's camp? You know, like, I, I that always fascinates me, because, like, I don't think I've ever been, like, so doggedly, like, nah, they're not lying ever about no. anyone. You know, I'm just kind of like... It's just a weird hill to die on. Yeah, it, it's a weird hill to die on when you're not, like... <clears throat> and also, you've got no skin in the game either. Like, why throw down? Like, yeah. what's, what's in it? Yeah. Uh, the sponsors, the American Museum of Natural History and the Geographical Society and the University of Illinois, had impeccable scientific credentials. Uh, the eventual team of an Amer- American explorers and their Inuit companions comprised of young, energetic, skillful men. They included W. Elmer Ekbla and his uh, master's degree from University of Illinois as the expedition's geologist and botanist. Maurice Cole, uh, Tankary, uh, PhD, also from the university as a zoologist, and Harrison J. Hunt, uh, doctor. Um, Ensign Fitzhugh Green, a U.S. and geophysicist. And, oh, and, shit, uh, Brandon. Uh, Brandon, is, does, does, does Fitzhugh Green die? he's an ensign. There's, he is, it's a high risk. He's wearing a red shirt. Yeah, I know, right? Like, I'm worried he, about... I I don't know anything... Like, I don't remember all the details, but I'm worried about Fitzhugh right now. There's... I'm worried about... Also, shout out to Star Trek Strange New Worlds. It's, uh, decent. Uh... <laughs> also, it opens with... The first half of the first episode, I'm not gonna spoil anything, starts with Captain Pike cock-blocking Spock, who's literally, like, fucking his wife. And then a hologram ah. of Pike pops up. <laughs> then, what? Yeah. And like that's how it, it kind of opens. There's also a horse. Uh, oh, he's talking, his wife is a horse. What you're telling me? <laughs> yes, Buck's wife is a horse. You, okay, you got that right. Canonically, all right. Now I know. Uh, no, don't yep. worry. I got it now. It, it uh, all makes sense to me. I'm just going to jump forward, because th- this is just really me listing off names, and that's not fun for anybody. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't talk about... Don't forget about Minnick Wallace, which, I mean, I say only because he's the only, I'm assuming, non-white name on this list. Uh, oh, wait. There, 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 this, there's a, there's I, a, I actually, a few uh, uh, Native people there. I actually know... I think I actually know Minnick Wallace's story, but that's... Oh, okay, okay. Um, and Minnick Wallace, an, Inu- an Inuit boy Pierre had brought from New York, uh, fr- or to New York from Greenland in 1897, now a young man joined the expedition as an interpreter. Uh, bad luck followed the venture from the start. The original plan was to travel north by ship uh, in the okay. summer of 1912. 
You, uh, do you bells are ringing? I just want to take. I want to take a second. Do you talk about what about Minnick Wallace's life at all in this? Uh, his life during the expedition. In general, do you talk about Minnick Wallace's life? Do you talk about the incredibly fucked up shit that happened to him during the expedition? Yes. Outside the expedition, no. Okay. Um. I might. I don't. Pin, it's, let's it's been a let's put a pin minute. in this because if we don't talk about this, Minnick Wallace is actually probably the most significant figure on this list. By far, yeah. So we'll see. If, <laughs> uh, I wrote this probably months ago, so we'll see. The answer is, I don't know, maybe. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I, I took yeah. me a second. I thought I recognized it. Well, the thing that I recognized was Peary had brought from to New York from Greenland in 19, 1897. That, 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 that hit a particular memory in my brain cells <laughs> of a particularly fucked up story in history. So, yeah, so I, I think I'm trying to get back into the mindset of how I got to writing about Crockerland. We probably both stumbled across the same thing about a story about Minnick Wallace. And I think maybe. I found Crockerland somewhere might have been, I like been I mentioned. Because it, it might have been a Behind the Bastards. I think there might have been a Behind the Bastards or a, or a dollop where they go yeah. into like Minnick Wallace or like just the trafficking of like Inuit yeah. peoples. And yeah. then I think they like just offhandedly mentioned something about Crockerland, and that's and then it's like, wait, there's a whole thing here. There was a dollop in 2020 about it. Okay. Oh wait, about Crockerland, or about like about, Minnick Wallace? about North Pole? It, it was specifically about Robert Peary. Oh like hell him yeah! Trying to reach the the North Pole. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna have to re-listen to that. I bet it's a good one. Uh, no, it's got it because I, I remember the Minnick Wallet. We'll get into it. Um, yeah. Bad luck followed the venture from the start. The original plan was to travel uh, by 19, you know, the summer of 1912 and set up a base camp for the winter and make mm -hmm. a four-way uh, to and from Crockerland by dog sled over the Arctic ice in early 1913. Uh, the party would then overwinter again and explore Greenland in 1914 before sailing home. Um, so also, the idea of spending an entire winter just hold up somewhere in like the Arctic sounds like hell. I mean, spending two entire winters just hold up in the Arctic somewhere, and that is a part of your plan. Yeah, like but that's not like that's not like it, it happens on accident. You chose to do that. Yeah, that's the best case scenario. If everything goes right, you get stuck in the Arctic w over winter. Twice. 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 But like, like, I just struggle to, like, who chooses to do this? I don't know. Uh, like, 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 who the fuck chooses to do this? <laughs> just, like, just crazy I, people. I, I just, I'm just struggling with it. That's all. Yeah. The, uh, the museum named George Borup, assistant curator of geology, as expedition leader. Borup had accompanied Peary on his 1909 expedition, uh, his dash for the North Pole, but Borup drowned on April 28th, 1912, near Crescent Beach, Connecticut, when his canoe capsized. What? Okay. So the, the original um, uh, leader of this Arctic expedition drowned in a canoe accident. I don't want to knock on people drowning in canoe accidents because it happens all the time, but like, what a fucking bitch ass way to go if you're traveling to the the Arctic. Like, like, who? Like, it, I don't, I don't mean this as like everyone is a bitch ass person who who dies by canoe drowning. I'm just saying, if you're an Arctic he expedition the leader, Arctic. <laughs> yeah. yes, he's and he's he an Arctic expedition leader in theory. Like, this is a thing. Like, it's such like a, uh, it's like a warrior not dying in battle type thing, yeah, right? But, but it's, it's, it's like, it's, it's the equivalent of like a, a warrior, like a, like a, like, like chieftain type warrior or like, you know, somebody who's like super macho about warrior. Um, Lieutenant Dan, for example, right? Yeah. It's like, it's like if Lieutenant Dan died by slipping on a banana peel. 
it's almost worse because, yeah, he died in a canoe accident, which is bad enough. But it was a canoe accident in Connecticut on a beach. Like, he died in, like, like rapids or, like, white water. Like, he capsized where, he, where kids play. <laughs> like, I mean, I don't want to under, like, I don't want to underplay, like, the notion of dying by drowning. Um, but That is, uh, uh, I think, possibly the worst way to go. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. But still, like, this is just kind of, like, it, 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 it's just... Yeah, I get anxiety like, in watching movies where people are underwater. Yeah, I, I just can't even. Uh, so that incident uh, delayed the expedition for a year. The museum then chose uh, as director Donald B. McMillan, also a party member of uh, Pierce's 1909 expedition, who regarded Crocker Land as the, quote, last great geographical problem of the North. Um, McMillan uh, reorganized the enterprise, uh, bring the team to full strength. With I'm just all right. Yeah, all right. Is it though? No. Okay, got it. Just no, just nah. No, it's not. I feel like there's a lot more geography of the north that hasn't been mapped out than just fucking Crocker Land. Yeah, but okay. this one it's named after a guy. Um, with Burp gone, none of the ex- expedition participants were personally affiliated with the museum. The institution's role was chiefly organizational and, fi- <laughs> and financial. It's that pollen that's in the air. My windshield was all yellow this morning. Um, yeah, fi- that's fair. Finances turned out to be a heavy burden. With the museum shouldering most of the cost, initially the budget was an estimated $52,000. Uh, but the final figure is said to have come to nearly a hundred thousand uh, dollars, contributing to the expensive uh, expenses. Were two ships had to be chartered for the journey north, and it took another three to rescue the men who became stranded there. So they. Uh, oh uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is so dumb. This is like they like more than doubled this- the number of ships required. This story is one of those, like, it, it's just, like, a bunch of dumb people just fucking doubling down on their stupidity. Just a bunch of dumb, du- uh, yeah, just dumbs. <laughs> well, okay, okay. A bunch of smart people who are just not wise in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, I feel like th- there was a lot of them not listening to somebody's advice. I this. bet you, I bet you, I, I, I can almost guarantee that, like, Minnick was just like, you shouldn't do this. Oh, you know what? I thought the whole, the whole problem was they just never listened to any of, like, the, like, Minnick or any of the Inuit that they had helping them. Oh, if, 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 if oh, no. Oh, of course not. It was just the white dudes. Yeah. Like, like, they're just like, oh, what were you saying? <laughs> I, I said you shouldn't do. I, man, look at all this. Look at all this snow. Isn't it great? <laughs> He's like a lot of make me like. All right, don't listen to me. It's not like I just live here for my whole life or anything. Well, actually, Minnick has a whole thing. Yeah, Minnick, he does have a whole thing. He has a whole fucking thing. Uh, <laughs> so, documentation of the adventure includes McMillan's four years in the White North, 1918, uh, contemporary dispatches and manuscript journals, notably those of McMillan and Green. Uh, an, an excellent short account uh, I've re- relied on is John French's Grand Illusion, The Search for Crockerland, uh, in 2008, which emphasizes the role of the two um, Illini, uh, Ekba, and Tank, uh, Tankwari, which are the, the, yeah, the native those, peoples those- that they brought with them. Those are probably the two that they ignored the most. Just the most, and they paid yeah. so dearly for it. Um, uh-huh, the, ex- uh-huh. the expedition's ship, uh, the streamer steamer Diana, set sail on July 2nd of 1913 under favorable conditions. Yet two weeks later, on July 16th, around midnight, the Diana, uh, in trying to avoid a large iceberg, uh, crashed on rocks uh, along the Labrador coast. So they, uh, they uh, evergreened themselves. Uh, McMillan blames what? the disaster on the what? ship's captain, who is drunk. <laughs> Don't get drunk and dodge icebergs on your ship. Okay. It's not like they were dr- they were fucking piloting the Titanic, right? 
<clears throat> Not only this, isn't this like a year after the Titanic went down? Oh, when was the Titanic? Oh, when was the Titanic? 1912, April. It's this like is the year in, after. It's the literal year after. It's the literal year after the Titanic went down because of icebergs. Oh, like this guy's getting drunk and he's dodged the iceberg. He could have literally turned anywhere else. It's the ocean. <laughs> like, I mean, the main reason the iceberg was hit with the Titanic is because the Titanic was a fucking huge ass like ocean liner. This is a big ship, but like they it's could not have an ocean slowed liner. down. Yeah, they could have slowed down. Yeah, he's like, I'm not drunk. And fucking, you're drunk. Just fucking spins the wheel as hard as he can. And just rams the ship aground. <clears throat> uh, the expedition's members transferred the Eric. Uh, and finally reached Eta in uh, northwest Greenland in mid-August. Uh, though eventually inspired by their mission to find Crockerland, McMillan's team grew disheartened as they sledged through the Arctic landscape without finding it. Uh, quote, you can imagine how earnestly we scanned every foot of the horizon. Not a thing in sight, McMillan wrote in his 1918 book, Four Years in the White North. Uh, so, <laughs> Brandon... I just want to point out, once again, this is a bunch of people who never saw this and are just taking Peary at his word. Correct. Okay. Just wanted to be clear about that. Now, Peary um, knows the expense and what could possibly happen to people when they go on an expedition. So I'm not going to oh, show, a fucking murderer. show my cards as to... At this point, if Crocker Land is extant Brandon, or made up yet. We, we've already talked about whether or not it's extant or made up. But if you send this many people out to the Arctic to find a place that you know doesn't exist, you're an asshole. You're a murderer. No, you're not just an asshole. You are a fucking murderer. No one you died yet. You have murdered those people. No, no one's died yet, but someone's going to die. I mean, we've already got one death. That's not correct. We have a death. He was that canoeing. It was canoe related. <laughs> we don't know if we do not know if he would have died if it weren't for Peary. That we that don't canoe have any was, evidence. He was purely practicing for the Arctic waters. He wouldn't have been in that canoe in Connecticut otherwise. Or maybe he wouldn't have been able to afford to go to Connecticut because I think he was like from Illinois. So like, oh okay. Uh, you don't know. You Who know? knows? Uh, but a discovery. I'm, I'm putting Peary's. I'm putting Peary's body count at one right now. We'll leave it at one. All right, we'll we'll do that. Oh well, mm, there's probably way more, but like one for the current discussion. W one for the present expedition. I'm sure if I do yes. a, a, an episode of a past expedition, there's pl probably more deaths. Probably more. There's deaths. probably a lot more deaths. There's probably a lot more deaths. Uh, but a discovery one April day by uh, Green, a 25-year-old ensign, and the U.S. Navy gave them he hope. He came back. As McMillan later encountered, Green was, quote, no sooner out of the igloo than he came running back, calling through the door, we have it. Uh, following Green, we ran on top of the highest mound, and there could be no doubt about it. Great heavens, what a land. <laughs> Hills, valleys, snow-capped peaks extending through uh, at least 120 degrees of the horizon. Wait. They found okay. Crocker Land. Well, but but wait, like they just like went over the hill and it's like, oh shit, this was all over here. It, it was here the whole time. All we had to do was turn around. We just had to go up like a small hill. Yeah, because uh, but... they're saying mound. They're saying mound. They're not saying like mountain. They're not even saying hill. They're saying mound. Mound. Yeah. Which a mound to me is like I finished. I finished shoveling my driveway. There's a mound over there. Yeah, like they just had to turn slightly left and they would have seen it the whole time. Yeah, I don't I don't buy this. Uh but visions of fame brought uh uh brought by being the first to set foot on Crocker Land quickly evaporated. Saying, quote, I turned to Piwatu to write McMillan of his uh Inuit guide, also referred to um uh by some explorers as Pug Pugatog. Um so <laughs> they're they're 
have a few different names, uh, I guess, for this. Uh, After critically examining the supposed landfall for a few minutes, he astounded me by replying that he thought it was a uh, a pujak or uh, mist. So they they just it was mist. (laughs) I I read ahead and I just I couldn't speak anymore because I was just like <laughs> like they should have listened to these guys more like because they're already like we found a landmass and the guy that knows this stuff is just like uh no I'm I'm, I'm pretty sure that's missed I just so here's the thing right um like imagine the audacity of these people right you see this this happens and you're like ah oh, fuck we're way out of our depth aren't we no, yeah. they never have that thought. They literally never have that thought. No, because they, they've no. Ne- they've never been checked before. Like they've always just gotten away with shit. So of course, if your whole life is just getting away with shit, why would you ever think that? Oh, I fucked up at some point. You're just gonna skate by again. Uh, McMillan recorded that the landscape gradually changed its appearance and varied in extent with the swinging around of the sun. Finally, at night, it disappeared altogether. Uh, so it was like, it was literally, there was never anything there. For five more uh, I, days, the explorers pressed on until it became clear that what Green had seen was a mirage, a polar Fata Morgana. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's going great for them so far. They're doing great. They're doing great. Like they discovered oh, a my mirage. God. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> I, I like barely read ahead and I just, I. The fucking dumbassery that's about to ha- be said. <laughs> As we drank our hot tea and nod on the pemmican, we did a good deal of thinking, McMillan wrote. Could Peary, with all his experience, have been mistaken? Was this Who mirage... Who would have guessed? Who could have guessed? Was this mirage, which had deceived us, the very thing which had deceived him eight years before? That's he- so... That's so, like, generous of a thing to say. <laughs> if he did see Crockerland, then it was considerably more than 120 miles away, for we were now at least 100 miles from shore with nothing in sight. McMillan's <laughs> mission was forced to accept the unthinkable and turn back. Quote, my dreams were... Uh, my dreams of the last four years were merely dreams. My hopes had ended in bitter disappointment. <laughs> Uh, but despair at realizing that Crockerland didn't exist was merely the beginning of the ordeal. <laughs> oh. See? I, I just... This is... <laughs> <laughs> McMillan sent Fitzburg Green... Uh, sorry, well, you, Fit, well, Fitz you Green. See, you see, they were 100 miles away, right? Yeah. They just they had to go another 120. Just they just had keep... to go another 20 miles. They just had to go another 20 miles. They were too. They left too soon. This, exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, McMillan sent Green and uh, the Inuit guide Puagatog West to explore the possible route back to their base what? camp in Etah. The two became trapped in the ice, and one of their dog teams died, fighting over the remaining dogs. Green, with an ala- al- alarming lack of remorse, explained in his diary what happened next. Quote, is it alarming, though? Because this, this isn't super alarming to me. This is just like... Hey, it's a dude from the nineteen early nineteen hundreds being an asshole to non white people. He's being an asshole to a non white person who was trafficked earlier. Like that's how he got yeah. here. Like Yeah. Like the whole story of how he got to be here isn't great either. Uh no. I shot once in the air. I then killed uh uh Pugatog with a shot through the shoulder and another through the head. Uh, Green returned to the main party and confessed to McMillan. Rather than reveal the murder, the expe- expedition leader told the remaining Inuit members of the mission that Pugatog had perished in the blizzard. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. He did a murder, and now they're now the the leader is covering for the murder and lying That's, to the rest of them. That seems healthy and okay. Yeah. Here's here's a a, a, a thought. If, if you're a white Don't. guy in the Arctic and you have a group of like Inuit guys that are helping you, maybe don't murder and lie to them. They might yeah, be the I, ones you're relying on to get home. I mean, maybe don't murder and lie anyone and also maybe listen to them in the first fucking place. Yeah, maybe when they tell you it's a fucking mirage, believe them that it's a goddamn mirage. Yeah. 
Uh, Green uh, was never prosecuted for the murder, although... Oh, we can talk the body account up to two, by the way, now, if you want. Yeah, it's two, it's two, it's two. So Peary's, at, he, Peary's got two deaths, and and those dogs. Oh, Peary, Pugatog, and how many dogs are in a, a carry a dog sled? Eight? Is uh, it eight? Something like eight or nine. Yes, we got two people and, like, nine dogs so far. I'm going to start... I'm <clears> opening <throat> up a notepad. Okay. <laughs> Uh, although the Inuit suspected there was more to the story than had been told to them, and that Green had a relationship with Pugatod's wife, uh, Alequisana, uh, a striking beauty, she had previously been Piri's mistress, uh, and had borne him two children. Uh, several- this poor man. Yeah. Like, can I just say, this poor man. <laughs> like, like literally... Gets- dies and then like his murderer has sex with his wife like that's uh, i just Oof. that's that's Oof. fucked that's bad yeah that's bad that's very bad uh several members of the also i'm not sure how much consent there would have been involved like oh zero she was going through a loss and was now stranded in the arctic with these guys so i'm not Wait, sure was she with them still was she a member of, like, the Was expedition? she a member? They didn't list. I want to say she was she was traveling with them. Or at least that's the way it was written implies to me. Because I don't think he would have returned home and then sought out Pugata's wife afterwards. Oh. Uh, Brandon. Brandon. <laughs> Brandon. Ah. Uh. Well, see, never, never, never underestimate the grossness of man. N- never underestimate how shitty people can be. True. Yeah. Uh, several members of the McMillan mission would remain trapped on the ice for another three years. Seems uh, good. Victims of Arctic weather. Two attempts by the American Museum of Natural History to rescue them met with failure. And it wasn't until 1917 that McMillan and his party were finally saved by the steamer Neptune, captained by seasoned Arctic sailor Robert Bartlett. I think if my like if my math is approximately correct, didn't like the US enter World War One and leave World War One in that time period? It's uh entirely possible. Let's uh I don't put those there. Nineteen fourteen to nineteen eighteen, sorry. They they were almost out of almost. World War One. They almost they almost were stranded in the Arctic for a war. The, enti- the entirety of World War One. Yeah. <laughs> uh Ekba and Tankari, however, learned the truth that McMillan had enjoined the former uh, from discussing the incident. Ekba would later call the killing of uh, Pukatog one of the darkest and most deplorable tragedies in the annals of Arctic exploration. Which, fair. Yeah, fair. it's on the list. It's on the list, for sure. <clears throat> Tankari and McMillan faced more hardships in the winter of 1914 to 15. Uh, they set out in, Dece- De- in December on a trip by dog sled to deliver mail to the southern Greenland. Uh, McMillan wanting to alert the world that Crocker Land did not exist and that the expedition would need a relief ship in the summer of 1915. They got lost and wandered aimlessly for 10 days in temperatures below, uh, sorry, as low as negative 50. Uh, quickly running out of provisions, they had to eat several of their dogs. Um, I'm going to put them at 10 dead dogs as an estimate. So we got two people, ten dogs. Ten so dead far. dogs. That's that's my estimate so far. Okay, worst road trip ever. Finally, mm-hmm. they reached an Inuit settlement. The exhausted McMillan decided to return to Etah, leaving uh, Tanquary to complete the journey to southern Greenland with a Danish trader and an Inuit guide. On the return trip, Tanquary removed his boots, and pieces of raw, bleeding skin and flesh fell off his rotting toes. And during Good. the exquisite agony of frostbite, Tankari uh, managed to drive his dog team 400 miles to Eta, where his big toes were amputated. 400. 400 miles by dog. Ekbal uh, described Tankari's dash back to Eta as the grittiest exploit of the expedition. Uh, I mean, uh, for what it's worth, he was only there. He was there for way longer than the rest of them. He may have lost some toes, but. Yeah, fucking but, out of that. Yeah. Uh, Tanker's message was received in the States, and the museum sent a relief ship to Greenland during the summer of 1915. The planned rescue failed. 
French lays blame to the miserly Edmund Otis Hovey, a curator of the ge- a curator of geology at the museum, who selected three masted schooners. Um, a three masted schooner. So, oh, sorry, a three masted schooner. It's not a steam. It's not a steamship. It's, it's not a steamship. Just a, yeah. yeah, just just a boat. Uh, the George Eight mm-hmm. Cluett instead of a steamer to rescue, according to French, uh, Hovey was to receive just a. Uh, sha, fucking that word comic pins for his quote penny pinching ways uh, he was on board the schooner when it ran into trouble and was trapped in the arctic ice until the following summer when the ice melted also how hard does it have to suck that you can get like just have to wait for the arctic to melt before you can move like I that- mean that's well that's like part of the reason why I think these people are fucking insane right yeah like how 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 small is your PP that you think that you need to like go to the Arctic to the 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 North Pole, the geographic North Pole for some stupid fucking reason? Yeah, right? and also they're like, up to just, like what seven ships now? Yeah, like <laughs> like it's stupid. It's, it's just crazy. a waste. Right? Like, it's a waste yeah. of human resources. It's a waste of human time. Why do you need to do this? There are better things to expend human energy on than trying to get to the fucking North Pole or prove that somebody went to the North Pole first. Like, I, I just want to point out that this is literally down to, like, them arguing about who got there first. The, the, that yeah. is the whole all it is. reason this is here. This whole expedition. There are two men dead and 10 dogs dead just to prove that one person got there a little bit later than the other person or that one person didn't make it when the other person did that is all that's happening maybe they just want to find santa as for hubby uh, who had planned on being away from the united states for two months he ended up being gone for two years. A second release ship was also trapped in the Arctic ice. So we're up to just so many fucking boats, and most so of them are rescue boats. ships. And the rescue ships rescuing total. rescue ships. And two, we had four total, two original, one of them broke, which was replaced by the, well, I guess that would be the res- first rescue ship. I think they're, they're, then they're, they're, two additional rescue ships. I think we're in, like, what, five steamers and two, like, masted ships? We're, we've got too many. Just there's just a lot going on. Uh, a second release ship was also trapped in the Arctic ice. By this time, three mem- three members of the expedition, Tankrari, Green, and Allen, had returned so to Green, the states. Green definitely, Green definitely stopped and uh, and fucked that dude's wife. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, uh, after Definitely. traveling by dog sled by <laughs> for a thousand miles down the western coast of Greenland, meanwhile McMillan and Ekba continued to explore the unknown parts of the Arctic. In 1917, so, the museum made a third attempt to rescue McMillan and the remaining men, so they're still stuck there. I just want to point out, Brandon, that like, okay, so maybe I'm ignorant, but when it comes to exploring the Arctic, isn't it just like all ice and snow? One would think, ice, right, snow, like, dogs, that's polar it. Polar bears, elves, maybe some narwhals, narwhals for sure. Yeah, well, elves are narwhals, so just elves like, are narwhals. So Santa's mm-hmm. workshop is populated by narwhals. by narwhals. Oh, they use they use the they use their horns to carve the toys. That makes so much sense. And some of them got soldering irons, like to replace their horns so that's like how they yeah. handle electrical stuff and when they start to like slip and maybe they're not hitting their shipping numbers then their their horns are harvested for ivory mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. works out this is, this great is, this is all facts all facts this time sparing no expense the museum chartered the steamer neptune and hired which it's coming back the neptune it it, it worked once why not send it again instead of your stupid masted ships uh, and hired uh, redoubtable Arctic sailor Robert Bartlett as its captain. The ship reached Nova Scotia on August 24th, 1917, with McMillan's men on board. By then, one, World War One was raging. Um, it's unclear whether McMillan ever confronted Peary about Crockerland, uh, about what exactly the explorer had.
might have seen in 1906, and perhaps what his motives were when Macmillan's news about not having found Quaker Lane reached the United States, Peary defended himself to the press by noting how difficult spotting land in the Arctic could be, telling reporters, seen from a distance, uh, an iceberg with earth stones may have been taken for a rock off a cliff-faced valley filled, <laughs> filled with fog or a fjord. So, I just <clears throat> want to take a second. Why the fuck didn't you say that from the beginning? <laughs> yeah. Why did you let people go to... Some people go to their death. Some people go to permanent maiming. Yeah. Like, you let people go through some bad shit just for, like, your your dick measuring contest. Like, two, two deaths, ten dead dogs, one person can never be a tap dancer anymore. It's crazy. No, it's going to be real hard. It's going to be real hard. Uh, he maintained, however, that the physical indications and theories still pointed to land somewhere in the area. So he's still... He's still insisting that there's fucking Crocker land. Yet later, researchers have noted that Peary's notes from his 1905 and 6 expedition don't mention Crocker land at all. As Weekly, as Weekly told National Geographic, he talks about a hunting trip that day, climbing the hills to get his view, but it says absolutely nothing about seeing Crocker land. Several crew members also kept diaries, and according to those, he never mentioned anything about the new continent. There's no mention of Crocker Land in early drafts of um, nearest the Pole either. It's only mentioned in the final manuscript that suggests Peary had a had a deliberate reason for the inclusion of the land. Like he he literally just wanted to get more money. Fucking terrible. Fucking terrible. I hate it. I hate it here. It's, it's, it's terrible. And Crocker Land, I'll, I'll lose, I'll, I'll group that in as, like, there's been cryptids that people have claimed were real, and then it turns out they were just making them, like, it's, it's, this fits in our, in our little genre, I think. I mean, the, this is kind of, like, kind of on the same level of the, uh, the moon people thing. Do the moon that? people thing? Oh, there's, like, a story about, like, a newspaper that put out a bunch of, like, supposed research papers from a person about how they found like a whole society of people living on the moon via telescope mm -hmm. how does that work well he made a better telescope that could see the surface of the moon better oh and he saw that there were okay people on the moon yeah um so i just want to take a second yes to highlight minnick wallace's life okay and how fucked up it was so he was born around 1890 Right. Um, he was brought as a child in 1897 from Greenland, New York City, with his father and others by the explorer Robert Peary. The six were studied by the staff of the American Museum of Natural History, which had custody oh, of the this assistant. is what that's from. I yes. remember this part. That's yes. Oh, and then that's where's the oh, okay. Oh it's wow, the adults. And one child died of tuberculosis, and one young man was returned to Greenland. Minnick was not one of those men. Minnick That's... was then given a staged burial of his father's skeleton of his father's body, and then they put the skeleton of his father on exhibit. There, yeah. Minnick was then adopted by William Wallace, the museum's building the museum's building superintendent. And did not return to Greenland until after 1910. He returned to the United States a few years later, where he remained and worked until dying of influenza in the 1918 pandemic. So, he fucking was fucked over, didn't get to go home until 1910, went on this stupid fucking expedition, got back, and then lived a year before he was dead by influenza. And not only that, but they deceived him by pretending to bury his father and then, and then put just his body on display put his body on display yes god you know yeah. these uh <clears throat> the, the, the native people from Greenland kind of got fucked pretty hard huh oh uh, like yeah he, i don't know what you're talking about i don't i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> <sighs> did he ever actually successfully get them home 
can't remember. I don't No, he didn't. Know. He was not able to. He was 28 when he died. God damn it. I fucking yeah. hate people. It's bad. I outlived him. Yeah, me too. Made it. God damn it. Oh, man. Well, now I'm sad. <laughs> so, Gave you a case uh, of the sads. Yeah, you started me out with a case of a, I want to die and ended with a case of I want to die, but it's sad. Yeah. <laughs> um... So if you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to check out our website. And I'm getting a phone call. And it's a scam phone call. What is your ringtone? It's the default Samsung Galaxy ringtone. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it. I it, I get a call from this like fucking portfolio recovery number constantly, and I just like have reached the point where I don't care. Yeah, I just don't pick if if you're. If it doesn't come up with a name on my phone, like something I've already put in there, I just don't. I just don't pick it up. Yeah, that's if it's fair. important, they'll leave a message. I have picked it up a few times, but that's mainly because like I have coworkers who I don't have in my phone who have my number, and I don't. I don't want to put their number in my phone. Oh, I have that, but I have it forwarding to a different phone, and that phone forwards to my phone, so I can oh, actually okay. see it'll show up that my other phone is calling me, and then I'll know it's a coworker calling the other number I gave them, and it just forwards see, to my cell phone. That would be the smart way of doing it, but that's not what I do. So, what I'm trying to say is I'm dumb. Uh -huh. anyway, um, if you want to follow us on social media, we've got an Instagram at CryptopediaCast and a Twitter at CryptopediaCast. Uh, our email is cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. And we have a YouTube where we upload these videos and there's uh, AI completed captioning on them. Uh, I haven't had the time to go and like actually go through and clean them all up, but eventually I might. Yeah. <sighs> well, then, well, I think I, our goal is just to like at some point get like text <laughs> versions out there. So that does it. Yeah. Mission accomplished. Yeah, eventually. Eventually. No, it's doing um, it. The AI, AI, AI counts. Yeah, it's, except it doesn't label who's speaking. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, not for some reason. It's pretty fucking obvious why it doesn't label who's speaking. Never mind. I'm dumb. Um, <laughs> We have a Patreon, and I'm so sorry to our jackalopes and supporters that we've been having issues lately. Um, But, you know, life be life. Uh... Anywho, just want to thank our jackalopes. We got Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, Lenwood Sharp, Matthew Sniff, Smith, not Sniff, not Matthew Sniff, Smith. I, I think I just said that wrong three times. Yes, you did. <laughs> okay, Matthew Smith, uh, Bushcraft Kelso, and Will Smith, Wiki Wiki. Oh, what the? Oh no, that's Kid Rock. Never mind. Yeah, that's that's Kid. That's like the. I don't know if I'd call Kid Rock completely opposite of Will Smith. Because Will Smith's... Yeah, no, I'm not going to... I'm not even going to touch that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we have a Discord. I don't want to have another, like, 10 minutes of the episode deleted while I work through some, some <laughs> questions of, like... I don't want to have another Dolly Parton on my hands, okay? <laughs> I don't, even, I don't think any of that made it into the episode either. Basically, I talked about Dolly Parton, and then as I was talking about Dolly Parton, I found problematic shit that I didn't want to reckon with. Anywho, uh, we have a Discord if you want to join. There's a link in the show notes. If you enjoy the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, all that good stuff. Oh, man, you don't see any episode. Hey, we should, when you, you get the like motherfucker. Um, if you have monster requests or stories, be sure to send them in. You could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my website, or sorry, and my Twitter is at cryptobrandon. My Instagram is at mu2057. My Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com. And my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com. And his email is tommichael at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. Hmm.